Uh, Niall Stanage from the Hill is joining me right now to discuss more of the State of the Union uh, ramping up. I mean, everybody is excited to hear what he's going to say in one hand. And on the other hand, it's like a lot of pomp and circumstance that the American people might think they can predict. Now, you were traveling with the president all weekend, uh, Niall. Do you get the sense uh, from him and the people around him that he is stoic at this moment? He has a lot on his plate. Or is he really charged up, emboldened by rising to the occasion of not just domestic matters, but matters foreign as well. So I think he is charged up by the fact that this is a big opportunity. State of the Union is always a big opportunity for a president to speak directly to the American people. But look, Adrian, there's no question that the Ukraine crisis overshadows this. Um, my sense from his circle over the weekend was that there's a combination of resignation and determination about this. They would prefer not for, for the situation in Ukraine not to be happening for a start. They would also prefer not to have such a big speech so dominated by a foreign policy crisis, especially when the president's approval numbers, as Joe mentioned, are really in some trouble. That said, it's the job of a president. There will be, to use your term, an attempt to rise to the occasion, for sure. Well, and you talk about that, that eclipsing of the agenda here uh, at home. Are there any polls showing what Americans want to hear about. I mean, obviously, so many are compelled by what's going on in Ukraine, but there's a lot happening on Main Street that is going to change life as we know it if it doesn't get fixed in 2022 and beyond. There absolutely is. And the question of how President Biden can thread that needle, I think, is one of the biggest questions that we'll be looking at tonight. You asked about polling. When Americans are asked about the most important issue to them, it tends to be inflation or jobs or the economy. Now, that is not to suggest that people's interest in Ukraine or people's distress for the terrible plight of the Ukrainian people is in any way in sincere. It's just that in Americans' daily lives, issues like their grocery bill, how much it costs to fill their car up with gas, those are the things that have the really visceral force in people's day-to-day -day life, I think. But for so many Americans, whether he talks about these, of course, very crucial issues, supply chain issues, and as you mentioned, inflation in general, uh, what is it that will help people possibly change their mind about President Biden? We noted those exclusive poll results from our News Nation viewers and voters. I mean, people today in this polarizing climate pretty much are stuck with what they believe in, and nothing, not even the State of the Union, is going to change that. You're completely right as to committed voters on both sides. And sometimes it can seem like the center ground in American life has become very hollowed out. But it does still exist to some degree. And those are the voters who can be reached in a State of the Union address that maybe can't be reached at any other time. Last year, President Biden gave a, a big speech, a, a sort of quasi State of the Union. 27 million people or thereabouts watched. There are almost no political set pieces that can draw that size of an audience other than the State of the Union. And the hope is that within that 27 million, there is some sliver, however small or moderate sized, that is open to persuasion, open to listening to the president's case in a, in a fresh way. Well, and I think that over the past few years about charges about voter, uh, of course, the transparency, the, valid, the ballot boxes, every vote does count. Uh, Niall, one quick question for you because we're out of time. Uh, are any surprises expected at this State of the Union? Will he be pulling out any stops? Do we know if there's something that's going to actually uh, maybe refresh uh, the State of the Union this year? One thing very quickly, Adrian, is that the First Lady will be permitted to bring some guests. Members of Congress are not permitted to bring guests because of COVID. So oftentimes in State of the Union addresses, it's those guests and whatever they have been through that delivers both a surprise in substance and often a very arresting image. Niall Stanage, thank you. Thank you for being here, as always. Good to see you. You too, Adrian. You can watch the State of the Union right here on News Nation. We'll bring it to you live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central Time tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.